Many people find themselves unable to fall asleep at night or waking up throughout the night or waking up early in the morning, not getting adequate amounts of sleep and then being drowsy all day long. This is the norm for many people and that's why we're going to cover nature's top sleep aids. But before we do, I'm Dr. Nick Zorowski and welcome to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell and also check out all my natural health videos at www.drz.tv. Now, this is really interesting because what I want to do in this video is I want to combine clinical knowledge and also the information from this article. And you're going to realize that a lot of times it's two different things, right? Because a lot of people get very frustrated. They see articles like this and they go, oh, you know what? I can just go and do what's in this article and it's going to work out for me. And then they do it. And of course it doesn't work because what happens clinically with some issues like this, of course, is a totally different story. Now this article kicks off with saying, avoid the risks associated with sleep medications carrying black box warning of harm, including death. Okay, this is always scary when people use medications that actually could cause death. I mean, my goodness, especially when you're going to sleep at night. Could you imagine taking a, a prescription that says like, ah, eh, it could lead to death and you're going to sleep? I mean, you're like, am I going to wake up the next day? So they go on to say in this article, nature has several effective sleep aids ready to ease your tossing and turning and escort you gently into dreamland. Now, I agree. We really have to look to nature to solve this issue and not medication, that's very important. So as we go down, one of the things I wanna say is sleep is wildly important to your health, okay? You don't want to disregard the importance of sleep. And when we look at key pillars to health, right? Exercise is one, eating healthy is one, quality sleep is another. If your sleep isn't good, it'll deteriorate your health over time to the point of uh, being very destructive. There was a time where I was getting really poor sleep, we had a new child, and I was up throughout the night more than I actually thought I was, just because I'm a light sleeper. And it turns out I was hardly sleeping. It was causing me to have high blood pressure, a lot of health issues, super frustrating. But I started tracking my sleep with a with a tracker and it turns out that I was getting hardly any deep sleep throughout the night. And this is a good point for you, okay? If sleep is something you're concerned about, start tracking it because you sometimes can lay in bed for hours on end thinking, oh yeah, I'm getting plenty of sleep, I'm good. Well, the fact is, is that you may not be good at all. You may be laying there and you may be in a very light sleep, but you're not getting into that deep sleep, which is very restorative. So I recommend if you are concerned about sleep being an issue, then wear a tracker. I'll put a link to the one that I use in the description below. The reason I like this one in particular is because it actually monitors your oxygen saturation rate, which is important because I actually thought at one point that I could have sleep apnea because my sleep was becoming so bad. Well, it turns out I didn't have sleep apnea I just had too many disruptions throughout the middle of the night. But track it and that's a good way to know what's truly going on. So melatonin is the first thing we're going to look at. Melatonin is a natural hormone associated with the sleep-wake cycle. Melatonin is released by the pineal gland in the brain during the evening hours, dropping in production when the sun rises. When the body's natural time clock your circadian rhythm is disrupted by things such as shift work, stress, or exposure to blue light from screens, melatonin levels can become depleted. Okay, this is why you see, you know, the, the advice of don't go on screens at night. You know, the TV, be careful about it. Being on your computer, your cell phone, be careful about it. Wear blue light blocking glasses or make sure that you actually have one of the, the, the settings on your phone or your computer that's going to change the color of the screen as night comes around where it starts to turn a little bit yellowish red as the night progresses. So we want to be aware of that because as you can see it depletes melatonin. So during such times supplementing with melatonin can be a safe way to restore natural balance. Now as we look at melatonin I do find it is something that can work. I don't like to use it um, long term. I like to use it in the in, for a short period of time in order to help people get a boost boost in their sleep just so that they can get some deep restorative sleep and then we can figure out a solution to the problem in the meantime because what can happen is by taking melatonin long term you can actually disrupt your natural levels of it and where you get to the point where you're very much relying upon it. So 
You don't want to take melatonin uh, for a long period of time. I like using melatonin for people when they're sick because it's a natural antioxidant and it helps them sleep better, but also as just a little sleep booster when somebody's really in need. One of the things you can do is you can use like a slow release melatonin, which will really offer you more of that long-term benefits versus just a short boost in sleep. You'll actually get sleep throughout the entire night. Now let's go ahead and so melatonin is a good option. It's just not something you want to rely on heavily. Vitamin D is also a good one. Exposure to sunlight is not only essential for maintaining a healthy circadian rhythm, it's a primary source for photosynthesis of vitamin D's precursor, pre-vitamin D3. There are more than 1,000 known genetic processes that are regulated by vitamin D3. So basically, vitamin D3 is going to help you sleep better. Now, um, what I'll do too is as we're talking about these vitamins, I will link up the ones that I use in the description below so that you can have quality ones that will actually work for you, ones that I use clinically. Now, looking at vitamin D, it's important to know that if you take it at night, it can help with your sleep much better. Okay, I've noticed that just working clinically with patients is that when I put their vitamin D3 at night versus during the daytime, we can we can oftentimes boost sleep. Okay, and let me tell you this too. As we look at how to improve sleep, you're going to get all kinds of magic solutions out there. The magic pillow, the magic mattress, the magic vitamin. At the end of the day, it is a very hard thing to improve in people who are struggling with sleep, okay? And so you're going to find typically that it's not just one thing that you have to do to improve your sleep, it's many, okay? So we might, you know, we might be using, you know, a vitamin D, we might use um, melatonin, we might we, we might be throwing five different things at it from a couple different angles in order to get there and it still can be a challenge okay I mean and then you start looking at other um, scenarios too it's like the blue screens um, working on the circadian rhythm which we'll talk about in just a second all of these little things can help now um, as we're talking about vitamin D let's let's just talk about the circadian rhythm real quickly one of the things that you can do in order to make sure your circadian rhythm is set appropriately is make sure that you're going out in the sunlight in the morning being exposed to the the, the sunlight and the just light in general because it, the way that the Sun hits your body and the light hits your body it basically kickstarts your your system to realize okay it's daytime right because there's people who like their body they just don't know if it's daytime or nighttime it, it, they're all messed up so in order to kickstart the circadian rhythm appropriately in the morning what you want to do is go outside and let the sun hit your skin and do that for a little period of time maybe even go for a walk and then that's why at night it's important to shut down some of the screens and let your body know hey it's nighttime okay because by doing this you're setting up your circadian clock appropriately and these are all little strategies you can use in order to help you sleep better at night. Now, vitamin D, in order to get it, it's best to take it in supplement form. I mean, you, could, of course, can be getting it outside. And that ideally, you're getting the sunlight. But unfortunately, just, you know, the way people work in offices today and also just because, you know, a lot of us are living in – you know, climates like I do, like in Michigan, where you just don't get a ton of sunlight throughout the year, uh, it's best to supplement with it. This article goes on to say, well, you can get it from eggs, you can get it from fatty fish. I'm going to tell you, if you're counting on getting your vitamin D from fatty fish and eggs, you have to be eating an awful lot of them. So it's unlikely that that source alone is going to be able to give you sufficient vitamin D levels. Vitamin D deficiency is a big problem in today's society. So we have to make sure that we have adequate amounts. Next, let's talk about passion flower. And this one's a little bit out there. Passion, passion vines produce passion flowers, a lovely addition to any garden. Did you know that a passion flower is also a treatment for insomnia? If you can't avail yourself to passion flowers with a sunny stroll through a garden, you can enjoy a sleep inducing benefit of pa passive flower, flower incarnata in supplement form and possibly kiss your sleepless nights goodbye. So this is something else you could throw at it. A lot of times you'll find passion flower in mixed formulas that um, are for just relaxing you altogether, your nervous system and everything. Um, I haven't particularly seen great results with passion flower, but it is something you could of course try. Everybody reacts a little bit differently. I just wouldn't count on it being the 
only thing that's going to move the needle for you. But I also wouldn't look at, oh, taking a vitamin D is going to fix it or, or uh, melatonin alone is going to fix it. It's typically a, a blend of many things, okay? Lavender essential oil is the next big one. Now, I am a big fan of this because it's very easy to take lavender essential oil and all you have to do is... Um, is uh, you can either you know uh, you know sniff it. You can put some on your skin. You can put some on your feet. You can also um, use the aromatherapy using lavender, which is a great way to get a, get it and, and breathe it in at night. You basically use the aromatherapy system and uh, just put it next to your bed and breathe it all night. And it also can help um, calm you and help you sleep better at night. So lavender essential oil. It's just a you know inexpensive, nice little trick that you can also add to the ways that you're working to improve your sleep. Valerian, valerian root extract is typically what you would see in supplement form. Valerian root is known for being the inspiration for the anti-anxiety drug Valium. So it's no surprise that this botanical is valued for its calming sleep inducing effect. Valerian is the most widely studied herb for sleep and is generally recognized as safe by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Okay, we don't really get too concerned about what the FDA thinks when it comes to any natural vitamins because they typically don't have a say in them simply because they can't make money on it. Okay, the FDA, what you will find as you really dig deep is they tend to care more about things that are patented that can turn a profit. They don't care about things like valerian, which cannot be patented because you can't just go patent a flower or an extract like that. Because they can't patent it and they can't make money on it, they tend to not care. That's why a lot of times vitamins in general, the FDA really doesn't claim them to be safe because they can't make money on it. The FDA is not an organization that is uh, in general looking out for your uh, better well-being, just to be clear on that. So Anyway, valerian root. Now, cannabis. This is the next one, and I actually really like this one for sleep. So, what I would recommend is like a, a hemp or a CBD oil, and these can really help sleep. Now, I personally was convinced that eh, it's not going to really do anything for anybody's sleep. I tried it myself, and it didn't do anything. What I found is that I had to take like almost three times the dose recommended on the bottle in order to actually get benefits from it. So, cannabis is slowly slowly being integrated into the legal pharmacopoeia in the United States. But this plant has a history as an herbal remedy that spans millennia. Upon ingestion, active phytochemical compounds in cannabis called cannabinoids bind with the receptor sites in the brain to deliver a host of therapeutic benefits. On such effect can be deep relaxation and yes, better sleep. A 2017 study seeking to summarize the state of research on cannabis and sleep, including specific sleep disorders, found that the cannabinoid cannabidiol CBD may have a therapeutic potential for the treatment of insomnia. CBD further showed potential for treatment of REM sleep disorders and excessive daytime sleepiness, a frequent side effect of poor quality sleep. Now, I'm a big fan of this. As a matter of fact, I was recommending this to my mom the other day, and she was terrified that I would recommend that she use something like CBD because she, in her mind, she thinks I'm recommending that she smoked marijuana. But please understand, CBD is just an extract from the hemp plant, the marijuana leaf, and it's something that is completely safe. It also doesn't have an effect on making uh, you hallucinate or anything like that. It doesn't do any of those things. It doesn't make you high, nothing. So a lot of people get confused on that, but it's important to realize that the CBD can be very beneficial. I remember when I used it myself, I wasn't getting any results. And I took like a, a dose that was about three times after reading some research and proper dosing. I took three times what was recommended on the bottle and I had the best night's sleep I had ever slept in probably like 10 years. It was pretty amazing. Now, I haven't been able to um, duplicate that. It happened once and I couldn't get it to happen again. But I do know that if I find that I'm having kind of a buildup of stress in the body, using um, a, a, a CBD will start calming me uh, and help me sleep better at night. So I'll put a link to the one I used in the description as I mentioned before. Now chamomile is also great. I'm a big fan of using chamomile. You can just drink some tea at night before you go to bed. It's calming. Why not use it? Now as we move on here, one of the things I also want to mention that I really like to use is magnesium. Okay. Now this article doesn't talk about magnesium, but magnesium has been the biggest game changer in my sleep period. It does not mean that 
magnesium alone will be a big game changer for you. But what I do, and I'll put a, as I said, I'll put a link to the ones I use. But when I use magnesium, I'll use two scoops of this powder at night before I go to bed and I will sleep like a baby. I'm telling you, it's been a game changer for me. So this article doesn't mention it, but there's a specific magnesium that's able to cross into the brain and help not only calm the muscle tissue, but also the nervous system tissue and really give you some great relief, helping you sleep better at night. So these are some top ways that you can improve your sleep. I hope you enjoyed and I highly recommend you watch this video next.